one of the things that I think recovery or, you know, not using drugs and alcohol that was really important for me was I was somebody who drank and used, I believed or believe that, um, I was using drugs and alcohol as a response to, and to pain. It was a medication for me. It was a, it was a solve. Um, it softened the blow of life. Um, in the beginning, when I first started drinking and using drugs, it was right after my HIV diagnosis. Um, I was infected with HIV when I was 19 and I found out when I was 20. And at that time I had lost church. I had lost my community. I felt like I'd lost my life. I'd lost my future. I had disappointed my family, you know, all those sorts of things. And it was just too much to bear. It was too much for me to, to take um, all at once. And so um, drinking and using was something I had saw or I'd come to believe and understand that um, people who use drugs and alcohol needed to because life had been really hard to them or there were traumas or like there was just no other way to exist but to have alcohol or drugs in your system. Um, even if it's not problematic use, just like, again, just to kind of like having a drink or a drug to kind of soften the blow of life. And that's what it was for me. I mean, I think it really was able, it really helped me. It gave me life in the time that I was struggling to believe I could have one of my own. Um, and uh, it just, it was such a gift for a while. Um, I met people who, uh, I met amazing, beautiful people who were openly queer and just living their best lives. And that was so good for me to be around that and to come to, to know and, and be with parts of myself that I felt like I should be ashamed of or I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be a part of me maybe even. Um, and I'd be able, I began to be able to just, you know, have my head a little higher, um, as a queer person at that time, I just really, I didn't want to be, but I had, I definitely knew that I was, um, I just didn't know how to be. Um, and, and yeah, so drugs and alcohol were helpful in a lot of ways. Um, and also it brought in a lot of complications. I think guess where I was starting with some of that is that I, I, yeah, so, so, um, so part of the process of getting sober when I did a big part was being able to sit through some of that pain and some of that grief and some of that loss of, you know, like even to some degree, I'd been living with HIV at that point for nine years. Um, so I was pretty aware of it. And I had big part of my life was centered around my HIV diagnosis and I was very open about it. And it was a big part of just my identity and who I was. And so to some degree, I had, through that process, through sharing my experience with HIV and talking with others about it and receiving love and care and support um, in spite of, or, or you know, um, I was able to kind of heal that part of me, but then there was just so much of, so much other pain and stuff that I had to kind of just sit through. Um, I had a number of sexual assaults that happened during my substance use, which was, you know, not one of the good parts about my substance use that I got to sit through. Um, gosh, it, there was just so much. I remember just crying. Um, and, and that was something that I had needed to do. I needed to feel some of these feelings and hurt and also, um, and, and I just didn't have to do it alone. You know, I was surrounded by people the whole time. It's interesting how like <laughs> this, um, <laughs> this conversation is going around my recovery at this point in time. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I have throughout the years, I've met a lot of people who um, have had um, uh, difficult relationships with substances um, and uh, who um, practice harm reduction or abstinence, or, you know, there's a lot of different ways that folks can uh, choose to um, address how substances, drugs and alcohol impact your body. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that's been really great about recovery in general and continue continuing to identify as a person in recovery. It just, it continues to help me be honest. It continues to help me 
uh, check in with myself. It continues to help me make better decisions. And uh, I fall short a lot less <laughs> often uh, than I did before. I feel a lot better about myself. Um, I also have a spiritual way of life again, which was something that I had treasured for so long and lost. And that's been one thing that's been really a great gift, if you will, um, of recovery. I was, you know, as, as you hear me often and they say some things, I'm like, try not to think too much about this ahead of time so that I can just kind of say what comes to mind, but also, um, also try to have some sort of semblance of <laughs> uh, understanding uh, for folks who are going to come across this at a later date or as I speak at the, in this moment. But um, uh, I have, as I've lost a number of friends and people in my life to drugs and alcohol, drug and alcohol use that led to unaliving and um, overdose. And, um, and I've seen people um, cut down and stop and start and stop and start. And I think one of the things that I wanted to try to say is I have had some friends and some people that are close to me who have experienced relapse recently. Um, in the circles that I'm in, abstinence is, you know, absolutely none ever is kind of a big kind of way of thinking and um, and to and having an amount of time. I think we often give too much time or too much power to having time from substances. And at the end of the day, it's just about, you know, like, I don't think that you undo your time. You know, if for whatever reason I decided to drink or use tomorrow, um, I don't believe that would take away from my recovery journey. It might, it would take away from, you know, my number of days that I had been consistently without consumption of drugs and alcohol, but it wouldn't necessarily, you know, take me away from recovery altogether or even just fucking living my life. You know, I really feel like that's what... I don't even know, to be honest with you, like some of this like recovery has been difficult for me over the last, uh, hasn't not difficult in the sense of like, uh, like I'm jonesing for a beer or I'm jonesing for drugs or <laughs> jonesing for some sort of escape. Um, that's one thing that I've come to know um, by cutting out drugs and alcohol in my life, I also being, began to see other things that can really distract me and take me away from life and take me away from self and take me away from, you know, a, a regular connection with, um, with a higher power and a spiritual way of life that there are lots of things that I could consume or over consume or consume for the purpose of, um, avoidance or cushion or comfort. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've, um, you know, I, I've come to understand that like I have codependency at times. Um, there's been times when I spent money weird, like too much, you know, just buying, you know, like retail therapy. And, um, I've had moments of, uh, food and, I've had moments of sex and moments of just love and relationships. And, you know, there's so many things that I can over consume and consume to the point that it takes me away from life. And that is something that truly I, I'm the only person who can really know that. And I could never know where anyone else is. And I think that's like the biggest thing that in being in recovery that I continue to ask myself is like, is what is in my life serving me? Is it helpful? Is it of use? Um, or even just looking at how and why I might be experiencing certain things or doing certain things and becoming more curious about what that is. You know, um, I think in the beginning I had to really push so much away. You know, I had to, I just had to push so much away and I had to make life really simple because that's all I could handle. Like everything had to be black and white. Um, and, uh, you know, right or wrong, um, yes or no, you know, and, um, I think life in and of itself is more, there's a lot more gray area. There's a lot more in the, in the, in the tween of everything. And that's really, um, 
in order for me to continue to grow. And I think you can continue to choose not to have substances in my life. I have to begin to understand that there is there that black and white, there's no, that, you know, like things aren't black and white. There's such a spectrum of experience and ways to see them. And truth isn't always just as I see it or as I know it to be. And just because um, I don't know all of the truth doesn't mean that what I know isn't truth or part of the truth. And um, I think that's one of the things that I love about um, about being in recovery is just continued, continuing to be aware and mindful enough and not distracted and not pulled away so much from myself and from the world and from God that, that I, I can't be present for things, you know? And um, I, uh, I have been having difficulty with, um, you know, I feel like I've been pulled away a lot from spirit, from God, if you will, because, you know, I'm just having God issues because of religion crap and, you know, all those sorts of things. And it's not, it's for me, I, I know, like I have, my spirituality is that there's a spirit inside of me. There's a spirit inside of you and there, and it is connected and it's the everything in between. It's what connects the creatures and, and, and the other humans. And it's uh, what holds all the parts of me together. And so for me, spirituality or even God is maybe all of that, that, you know, my understanding of that at all times. And so for me to live a spiritual way of life is for me to understand and remember that that is the truth, that we are all connected. And there's this thing that makes us one. Um, and yet we all get to be, um, you know, and so, so for me, I feel like I know that to be true. Like, I feel like we are all here together and to be kind and loving and to find a way to be with one another um, in a, in a life affirming way for, for everyone. You know, I know that that's the goal now, how I get there and, and um, how I come to even, you know, like, again, it's kind of that gray area of getting there that is still just so much more for me to, um, to learn from and to experience and spend time in the in-between of that all. Um, hi, Amber. Um, Amber says, hi, beautiful. And I'm not a believer. And I totally understand that. Like, I don't know, again, I, I, I think for me, it's been a journey. I feel like for me as a spiritual person, I think the only thing that I've continued to do since recovery is constantly seek um, some sort of understanding of the more, understanding beyond me, um, not without me, but beyond me. Um, I know sometimes people talk about, um, like I, I believe there's many higher powers. And for me, a higher power is me plus you. It's me plus five people. It's me plus work. It's me, you know, like it's me plus, I think the, the thing that's important for me, that's helpful to me is that to remember that I'm not alone and that, that I am not like, to not be so self-centered um, and yet still find a way to be, again, because there's that duality, also find a way to be self-centered enough to where I take care of myself and I, I, I be authentic and I, I, I don't, abandon myself and I don't betray myself in the um, in the goal of, of trying to connect with others or trying to be in community with others that you know I it's I can't betray myself in order to hang out with you I can't betray myself or abandon who I am in order to participate in this religion or this group of people or to, you know, like, and that I think is a continued journey for me to, to be able to connect intuitively with myself enough to know or to seek or whatever. Again, I don't even know where this is going. I feel like this is going so many weird different directions. And I don't feel like I talked a lot about, I just, yeah the recovery and time is I'm just on my, my head is spending and spinning and I'm at that 33 minute mark. So I'm supposed to stop. And like with a lot of these moments that I take to talk, um, I just sharing what comes out of my mouth and, uh, what 
uh, it's really just sharing what's in my mind and on my heart. And there is so much that can be said, and there's so many areas to talk to and share as far as my experience goes. And again, I just share my experience because I know that I began to see myself and I began to see what was possible. Um, I began to see my reflection um, because other people were willing to share their story. They were willing to um, live their life in a way that, um, again, that I could see myself in. And so that's a lot of, I think, my hope because there was so, I have spent so long so long not seeing seeing me seeing who i am um and uh i i i don't if i can be a part of helping somebody to um to see themselves to reflect back to them more of who they are or who they can